In the first place, I mean, the first question that comes to mind is many say that when it comes to managing my accounts or my finances, it's really difficult. I don't know what to do. It's only professionals or people like yourself who are educated in these areas who can do it. So leave the rest of us to it. Let's just muddle through the waters. If, if we have money, so be it. If we don't, so be it. What's the first advice for people watching? Can they do it themselves? What kind of advice do they need? Well, I think I'll start by saying that I see it as a myth mm. where people think that uh, managing finances is like rocket science because it is not. I think everyone can uh, manage his or her finances because essentially it comes down to planning, mm. you know, making decisions and making the right decisions or the right choices. I think everybody knows that life is about choices. So what kind of choices do you make with your money? Um, how do you work for money? And then how do you let your money work for you? Okay. Where do you let your money work? Uh -huh. So it comes down to choices. Mm -hmm. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, there may be a few you know, technical things, and okay. that's why some of us okay. uh, you know, <laughs> make uh, our key. But right. basically, uh, anyone can master or control mm -hmm. or effectively plan his or her finances. Okay. At a point in time, you would need some advice from an expert, someone whose job is really to, uh, you know, with the financial product, financial industry, and so on and so forth. But I think that to tell yourself that I can't do it, you are doing yourself a great disservice. Great way to start. I want to get into that and get the options that we need and all, but I'll hold on with that for now. Okay. I just want to ask a question I, mean, I believe many people can identify with. We've just come out of the Christmas season. It's a new year. Many people are broke. A lot of friends, are, they don't even know how come they spend this amount of money during December. If I not just throughout the month of December, just in the last week or last two weeks of exactly. it or so, all their money is gone. Yeah. Where do they start from? Is it a gloomy situation? What can they do? Well, I, I think for starters, I, I, I'll say that um, this annual ritual mm -hmm. where December, there's a lot of spending, mm -hmm. and then January, uh, people find that they are broke. And so invariably, January tends to become a very long month <laughs> because <laughs> between the end of the year and then when you get paid, it's something else. And there are 31 days, if I'm right. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a very long month. I think the issue, again, has to do with planning. Listen, you can plan your expenditure in December or around Christmas or any festive season for that matter by taking some steps right at the beginning of the year. Okay. You know, but many okay. people do not do so. So for instance, if I want to spend X amount in December because mm -hmm. I want to have this function or this mm -hmm. activity or I want to do this to celebrate the, the occasion, right. I should plan right from the beginning of the year. I shouldn't wait till uh, December mm -hmm. and then any money or every money I have, I just give in to you know, the pressure and also get into the spending spree. Okay. If I do that, I'll come up in general like many people mm -hmm. broke. Right. Okay. So. I think people can move away from that. And mm. that's why I think you know, your topic for this program is very good because right from January, people can start planning mm. that if in December, that's December 2012, right. I want to spend X amount, then let me take these steps mm -hmm. starting from January okay. so that you find that when it's time for Christmas mm. or any festivity, you don't have to borrow. Okay. I mean, people borrow money uh, for all kinds of things. Mm. And um, I'm sure maybe we'll touch on borrowing later. But right. you, 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 if you borrow just to spend, mm. you are you know, shooting yourself in the foot. Okay. Because you must borrow only to support activities that will generate some income. Okay. You know, so I think that, that the starting point is to plan for anything that we anticipate in the future. Okay. I have a concept I call pay the future. Mm. And basically what I try to say is that what kind of future are, are you looking for? Um, and if you talk about, let's say, even in a, in a, in a given year, mm -hmm. you're talking about Christmas, your birthday, your vacation, sure. whatever it is, you mm -hmm. can plan for it okay. and pay for it by putting money aside mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. before you get to that event or that activity mm -hmm. or that festive season. So mm -hmm. I think it boils down to how we 
take responsibility okay. to plan our finances. Okay. Let's not think that someone will do it for us. Mm. Let's not think that our employers will do it for us. Let's not think that some benefactor will do it for us. It's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. And listen, nobody can be more interested in your financial welfare than in yourself. Absolutely. You know, so Absolutely. I think it's up to people to take up that responsibility and okay. say that we can plan effectively such that we can go through all the festive seasons or all the anniversaries mm -hmm. without stress okay. and without having to borrow mm -hmm. and then end up having nothing left to spend on critical things. There's a very useful lesson I've picked from your last submission, which is that if, for example, I, I feel like eating something exotic throughout the month of January, but I don't have the money, and I decide that all I'm going to do is to borrow money to the tune of how much I need to spend transporting myself to the place, enjoying the food and the wine, coming back home to sleep and live an exotic life. And all it is is to spend it. Then it is not a wise way to borrow. At all. It is not. It is not. It must be something that is adding value to me. Absolutely. To help me generate money. Absolutely. That's a very critical point. It's because very I think critical. that many people do not have that consideration no, no. when it comes to borrowing money. They just think that people are borrowing mm. and let me also borrow. Mm. They give in to, if you like, peer pressure. Mm -hmm. um, this person has bought this thing mm. or is doing that or mm. is eating out at this mm. you know, newest spot in town. So right. I also need to you know, live up to that standard. And I, I think people are doing themselves a great disservice. Okay. Uh, there are some great things that I'm sure as we go on our discussions, right. I'll be bringing out which... But I really want to get deal with it right now. Uh, for example, so what are some of the examples you can cite in people's lives? If, um, f um, let's say, let's find a professional. I'm a footballer. I need football boots to play. Then that aids my business or my trade. So then it is wise to get a pair of boots if I'm borrowing and I know it will generate money for me or income. Right. You're saying that is an investment. Yes. But, but then that, okay, yeah. I, I have a book that um, is titled 31 Days to Financial Independence. Oh, wow. And in one of the chapters, I talk about choose assets mm -hmm. over liabilities. Mm -hmm. And basically what I say is that anything you, you have could either be an asset mm -hmm. or a liability. Okay. So for the example you cited, a footballer, right. uh, very good boots is an asset, okay. okay, because it will help you to perform, which will put more money in your hands, okay, okay so it's an asset. Right. You take a mobile phone, it can be an asset, depending on how you use it. You use it to generate business, make contacts, keep in touch with your clients, and so on and so forth. So what they call also use it just to chit chat, okay. and it becomes a liability because you're just spending okay. you know, money on it. So whatever you come across in life, depending on how you choose to use it. Mm. And my recommendation is that people should always look for using things or acquiring things that would be assets okay. more than liabilities. In other words, things that would add value, mm. things that would appreciate, okay. things that would accumulate, rather than things that would take away okay. or depreciate or be a drain. Okay on finance. I think that's a key thing uh, to looking for. A car can be an asset mm -hmm. or a liability, depending mm -hmm. on how you're using it. You know, so, so many things. Even a building. Mm -hmm. You know, you find people, they will um, build a, a very big house and with all the wh uh, whistles and bells. Right. Question is, uh, after X number of years, the children move out and all that, and you're there alone, and you're still living in, in that. It becomes a liability because you're spending so much maintaining it. It might be better if you have uh, you know, just that kind of house that would suit your, your purposes. And then you know, for such other big houses you may have, you mm -hmm. may re rent it out for commercial purposes and so on and so forth. So it depends on really how you look at things. Do I want this to be an asset mm -hmm. or a liability? Okay. And I think that if people begin to look for assets in anything that they handle, mm -hmm. it, they'll be positioning themselves you know, to be on the path of uh, creating wealth and having what I like calling financial independence. So you are talking about individuals now, and I hope we can begin to talk about firms. And I'm not even too interested in the big ones, the SMEs, which are very critical to our, the growth of our economy. And so we have so many small-scale ca companies in this country, just between, say, two to 15, 20 uh, employees. We have a lot of them. 
I'm sure they also should be thinking about financial discipline and all. And what are some of the things they should be considering? What are the necessary things? What are unnecessary? Sometimes you hear a debate in the company. It's not necessary for us to be buying biscuits for people who come to our company to visit us because really it's, it's a liability. It doesn't add anything to it. What we will get, we will get. What we won't get, we won't get. How does one make such a decision for your, for your company? Someone thinks it's just good to buy water. Someone thinks, no, it's not good to buy water because it's a drain on your finances. How does one make that strategic decision? as to what amounts to a liability and what really is an asset because it's the same commodity right. like you're saying it's the yes. same car yeah it could be an asset to a liability exactly it's the same mobile phone yes it could be an asset to a liability. liability how do we make that determination so i think that i mean for the example you you gave the smes for instance you need to look at you know the the, the line of business you are in mm -hmm. okay so for instance let me take the uh, issue of buying biscuits for let's say or uh, water or uh, drinks for right. your visitors. Okay. What would that add to um, you know your your value as a firm? Okay. Uh, is it something that will give you a competitive edge over your um, your other if mm -hmm. like competitors? Now, if uh, you're not going to derive any competitive edge from let's say spending your money on this or that you know for your client then it will constitute a waste because at the end of the day it's not going to if you like attract more money to come to you so i think it comes down to the good old cost benefit analysis mm -hmm. that is to say that for anything you spend mm -hmm. you need to ask yourself how much is it going to add to uh, my revenue. Right. Um, in financial analysis, we, we do what we call margin analysis. Okay. And you, for instance, look at um, every revenue that you're making, how much it adds to uh, your, your bottom line, okay. Okay, any sales. Mm -hmm. So in the same way, you want to look at what you're spending. Mm -hmm. you know, so if, if you are spending uh, this amount on water or this or that, how does it translate into your bottom line? Okay. What does it add to it? So I think it's a critical objective analysis of what we are spending and what that expenditure will bring back in terms of revenue. Okay. I mean, if you need to do some advertisement, you, you need to look at it. How will it impact on your uh, revenue base? So for Every expense item, I think for SMEs, they need to debate it rather than one person feeling like, oh, I think we should do this. Let's debate it. And also one of the things that I think is highly recommended, especially when it comes to expenses, because fundamentally you need to increase your revenue and then reduce your expenses. So I think the issue will be for uh, firms, especially the SMEs, to begin to look at uh, cheaper alternatives to the things that they spend money on. Yes, you need to spend, but probably you could get something cheaper. Okay. And I think one of the ways to do it is, uh, why don't you always get about two or three or four invoices? Mm -hmm. Just to compare whether you're getting okay. a, a, a good deal. Right. And because if you just stick with just one, you may be missing some very good deals out there. So why don't you consider a number of options mm -hmm. so that you can get a cheaper um, you know, option mm -hmm. for the expenses that you need to make to push your, your business. We're talking about managing our finances for the year 2012.